okay so very uh, good morning to you all so you are welcome uh, on behalf of the central library as well as the bishwabharati library network so today is the day 2 uh, uh, consecutive 6 days academic and research skill development program as you know bishwabharati library network and central library uh, organize such kind of special session throughout the year basically twice in a month so this is the another special drive in hybrid mode two. So yesterday we have completed our uh, day one on plagiarism is a big issues and current challenges by Dr. V. R. Tiwari, librarian Isaac Kolkata. So uh, today our second day and today's topic is uh, JGET as a research tools and our today's uh, speaker uh, is Mr. Mohindranath Sarkar from the informatics and our university librarian with the permission of the uh, our university librarian Dr. Nimai Chansaha due to his uh, ill health condition. I am just introduced uh, and just uh, welcome you all. So Mohindranath, so please the floor is now to your hand. So I hand it over to the floor to you. So you may proceed for today's demonstration. As you know, JGET Plus is one of the important, uh, not only the research tools, this is one of the important uh, ILL, interlibrary loan uh, tools too. So may I request today's speaker, Mahindranath Sarkar, the please. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Koshik. It's been a long, you know, since uh, I think last time we had a session like this. Uh, thank you again uh, for, you know, uh, giving this opportunity. Uh, I have uh, made a PPT. Uh, it's fairly simple and straightforward. I think the PPT has got around 30 slides. Uh, I'll do my best to uh, make it uh, appealable to all the scholars. I believe we also have uh, individuals from the faculty community. Uh, if I'm not Mind mistaken. That, please, let us be loudly. Please, little bit loudly. Uh, just a second. Just give me one second. Let me check the audio. Uh, how about now? Is it better? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I was saying uh, I have made a uh, PPT which has around 30 slides and it talks about range of, uh, I would say, topics in uh, research, uh, both uh, present and the future. So I'm going to share that with you and uh, hopefully uh, you appreciate it. Let me first share my screen. It's visible, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this slide introduces the topic uh, that we have today. Uh, now, uh, research itself is a vast topic. I mean, uh, uh, especially uh, uh, for scholars, if you have just been introduced to this world, uh, over a period, you will learn many things uh, on the research, uh, what it is, what's the objective. And then, so uh, now, the topic that I have been entrusted with to help you out is a platform called JGate. It's also called JCCC, uh, JGate Consortia, uh, because it is sponsored by Inflimnet Isho Shindu, uh, all the ESS members, pretty much all, uh, if not 100%, uh, including all the IETs and IMs, they all have access to this platform. Uh, they use it for their interlibrary loan facility. It's called DDR, uh, Document Delivery Request. So it's something that you all have access to it. 
uh, and uh, you can make the best uh, out of this platform that it offers. This gives you some basic idea in terms of the data, the number of articles, the number of journals, and uh, the number of publishers uh, that uh, JGET covers. Now, in terms of the numbers, uh, they are fairly decent. Uh, almost, you can say 99% of the data, they're scholarly data. Uh, I mean, they're peer reviewed uh, uh, articles, you can say peer reviewed journals. Uh, there are a few journals which are non peer reviewed uh, because uh, that number also comprises journals from various industries. And uh, if you are aware, then, then you would know that uh, journals from industry, they do not fall within the purview of this peer review concept. Uh, so combine that, you have got around, I think, 53 or 4,000 now, that number has gone up, uh, 54,000 journals across all the disciplines. So uh, if I need to mention some, I would say basic science, you have got maths, physics, chemistry, you have got social science, you have got separate segment for your, uh, this one, agriculture, you have got a separate segment for management, then you have got law, uh, there is a separate segment for IT and engineering uh, sector or domain. So uh, it's pretty much uh, all the, branches uh, have been laid out based on their predominance uh, but uh, if you are if you classify subject then it's like combination of both basic science and social science and it also uh, one other thing to mention uh, the number of publishers from where we aggregate the data so that's around 13000 uh, pretty much all the national and international publishers data are available. So uh, it will really help you to search when you are searching a particular topic, you can search across all the publishers very easily. Uh, there are many other features which we'll uh, talk about uh, you know, in the course of time. So uh, I think uh, uh, when you use this platform, when you uh, uh, use JGate, uh, there are some standard do's and don'ts. Uh, now, before I tell you about these do's and don'ts, let me give you a background how the platform operates or how you know it works. Now, for that, you have to kind of look at how articles are published. So you all know that each article is a is uh, attributed as a research paper. Now, when an article is published, or it is uh, an article is written by an author, and it is published uh, via a publisher. Now, each article, or every articles, there are three common elements. So first, starting with the title, which uh, gives you a basic idea what the, you know, the project is all about. Uh, then you have got set of keywords. Now, these keywords are the most important part uh, because these are the same keywords not only uh, help uh, you know, readers to understand the overall, the conceptual element, you know, the string of concepts that have been incorporated into that work, but it also makes them searchable document. So, at some point of time, especially for scholars, when you start publishing uh, and you write papers, uh, you have to be very cautious uh, about these keywords because uh, uh, you need to be a sort of wise in that you have to understand how people perceive certain topics and how people search. And accordingly, you have to choose a set of keywords that will best suit your paper and at the same time uh, will align with the reader's mind. Because if you have, let's say, a set of abstract keywords, which are you know, highly improbable that readers are going to uh, use for their 
uh, search, then your paper will always remain uh, pretty much obscure to the reader's purview. Uh, the reason being, uh, whenever we search information, we uh, always, most of the time, at least rely on those keywords. So it does the same. We take those keywords. Uh, and then third uh, is the abstract, the summary part. So these are the three, three key components uh, which are homogeneous in nature across all the research papers uh, on even articles, you know, normal articles. And when we index uh, these papers, these are the three components that we take into our consideration. And because of that, when you are searching something in this platform, you have to use or you have to rather abide by certain, there are certain uh, rules that you need to abide by. Otherwise, uh, the platform will appear a bit uh, complicated uh, to you, okay? So because of that, I have made these do's and don'ts, and this is the most important slide, uh, even if you forget the rest of the things that I'm going to probably illustrate. Now, just get one second, I'm sorry. So the first, uh, the most important part is uh, when you are searching information, trying to extract, extrapolate articles, use keywords, okay? Now you need to be a kind of uh, mature in that. If you are a mature, if you, I mean, uh, amateur, sorry, not a mature. If you're amateur, uh, means you just have started your probably thesis work, uh, take some time. Uh, hopefully you will get used to it. Uh, and you know it, it will be fine over a period, maybe just two three months. It will take uh, uh, you know I mean before you uh, get your hands on the keywords parts. So you have to use those keywords when you are searching information. Uh, in your phrase or sentence, try not to use verbs, adverbs, and adjectives because uh, these three uh, parts of speeches they always differ. Okay. So if you use, let's say that there is a component, okay, uh, application of, let's say, X, Y, Z drug. Now, what might have happened is uh, instead of application, some author might have used the term utility or maybe use uh, in such manner. Then uh, when you structure a phrase like application of X, Y, Z drug on this uh, on uh, so-and-so uh, domain, uh, you will not find that because you are using a uh, verb which is application, but the author used uh, something else might be simple term, which is use. Okay. So because of that, try not to use uh, when you just uh, in the beginning, uh, verbs, adverbs, and adjectives. And the best method is when, since it's a semantic platform, go for top-down search. Okay. Uh, now the basic principle of top-down search is this. So first you go for the generic uh, concepts or generic words, and then you try to go for some specification. In case if you have something, then you follow that you know, strata uh, while you are looking for information. So if you just keep these uh, few things in your mind, you are absolutely fine to go ahead with you know, uh, getting information in this platform. Uh, initially, it does seem some complicated because uh, most of us are used to, you know, Google, uh, searching information in Google, uh, but this is not a, Google is not a scholarly search method. Uh, and uh, if you use any scholarly platform, this is the standard method. Uh, we use a set of keywords uh, as, our understanding you know, based on the pragmatics uh, and also our understanding of the semantics and we search information to get it, to get uh, whatever we are looking for. Now, the next uh, slide is kind of try to encapsulate your uh, journey uh, in this, let's say, in this adventure uh, that you call, uh, we call uh, research. Now, <coughs> uh, 
the reason I have uh, I have this one is because uh, during lockdown, I was working on a on a paper actually uh, for my own, and what I was doing is this: I was trying to look at uh, the average citation of Indian scholars uh, alongside with uh, countries that are developed in nature. Okay, so uh, there were some Scandinavian countries and definitely UK and US and other uh, countries. Uh, I kept it, uh, you know, within the top 100 universities of the world uh, with uh, topmost universities of India. And I, ha I you can say I sort of, uh, you know, have this fortune that I've been able to associate with many of the universities. Uh, Vishwavardhi is also uh, one such institution. And whenever I go somewhere, I look at their credentials, the faculty credentials, uh, because eventually uh, they are the people who, you know, uh, do the most of the publication. Now, why I'm, I'm talking about this particular, even though it doesn't exactly relate to the topic, uh, topic of today's discussion. The topic is JGATE as a, a research platform, but still I have this one for a reason. And the reason is such, uh, I have a brother actually. And uh, my brother, elder brother, uh, uh, he would say uh, this to me always that uh, Mahindra, in life, if you want to do something, uh, if you have a goal or a vision, uh, the most important part is not uh, how or what. The most important part is why would you do that? So for instance, let's say you have a goal of becoming maybe a big businessman, or maybe you want to be, become a great scientist or a great scholar. The most important question is not the tools and the means. The tools and the means are basically the how part. They address the how question means, you know, uh, how you will get there, okay? Uh, but uh, as I was saying that, uh, my brother kind of says that the most important part is why do you want to go there in the first place? So if you want to become a great scholar, the most important question is, is not like, you know, how you will get there, the most important question is, why do you want to get there? What is the need? And if you understand, if your need part is clear, uh, then the how part doesn't matter because eventually you will figure out how to get there, okay? There are various ways you can go to a destination, uh, but the question is, why would you go there? What is the motivation? And if your motivation is strong, eventually you will get there. So for a scholar, uh, I think the motivation is definitely uh, your credentials, uh, the impact of your work. And one of the ways we kind of look at the credential is your uh, citation or your H index score. Now, last year or last to last year, when I was doing it, what I found is this, pretty much in social science, if I, if I mention first, because that is my domain, psychology, uh, almost you can say 98% of the scholars or the faculties, they don't even get to the threshold of basic H index scoring, which is the 20, okay? So uh, if you know the metrics, how H index is calculated, uh, and the person who uh, kind of uh, came up with this uh, idea of age index, uh, it's uh, for social science, it starts with 20. If you take Google Scholar, okay, you can start with 20, 40, and then you can go for 60. Now, when I was looking at pretty much all the top most universities and social science, including management uh, and definitely psychology, sociology, and all that, 98% uh, don't even get to that 20 level. Like I was looking at data with 10, 12, 15, 16, 
very few there were individuals with like maybe 20 25 uh, age index score uh, if i talk about the citation uh, pretty much it was like high citation maybe 200 300 and that's maybe top 1% or 2% rest are like maybe less than 100 you can say if you go to the basic science it's still the same uh, but in age index uh, part if you are in the basic science math physics chemistry engineering or the biomedical science uh, the number is slightly, uh, I think, better than uh, better than uh, social science. It comes around ninety three or ninety four percent. Again, is like less than you can say thirty H index, and then maybe hardly you know one percent, two percent they cross the forty marks uh, in Google Scholar itself. So, I was kind of looking at uh, trying to find out why that is the case you know uh, why i mean we have such low uh, scoring when it comes to age index and uh, citation now this is i want you to look at these are some of the thesis work from social science from psychology uh, you need just kind just go through it okay uh, you will i mean these are not that complicated uh, if you just read, you'll understand uh, what they're trying to accomplish. So you have papers from 16, 20, 22, uh, then you have 18, 13, 16, 16. And see the first couple of papers, it says, tries to basically uh, determine, uh, you know, stress level uh, in, uh, the first one is for some airport employees. The second one is they're trying to determine stress level in IT sector. Uh, third one uh, in some public administration administrative sector. Uh, fourth one with some uh, basic, uh, you know, uh, socioeconomic group, and it goes on like this. Okay, so these are all the thesis work. They are pretty much uh, 300, 400, or 500 pages long. Okay, now let me take you the important part of literature. See, when you usually, you know, uh, when I talk to people, uh, the one thing I always find that people have a misconception about the literature. Uh, for them, the literature is like, okay, uh, you are trying to, let's say, you are trying to work on, you know, maybe stress level in IT sector. So you go into the database, you, you know, find out if, uh, you know, some, I mean, somebody has done something like that. You try to find out uh, similar papers. Uh, then for convenience, what we do is we go to their references uh, because in reference also you find out similar papers and you use them as your bibliography and all. And then you go ahead with you know collecting data or whatever you are doing. But that's, I think, the first big mistake that pretty much uh, I found out that all the scholars do. See, JGate, if I can, uh, I'm not talking about at this time exactly about JGate, just a principle that JGate has, which is the literature part. Uh, if you go into the existing literature, okay, and just for curiosity, if you have some time, and if you want to study about, uh, if you just look at, uh, you know, uh, the overall the spectrum of stress or depression, Definitely the first, the most common area is uh, uh, psychoanalytic domain, the behavior, uh, you know, uh, behaviorism. Uh, most of the works are from, you can say behaviorism, okay. Uh, but this is 21st century, okay. Uh, this is not 1950 because that's how we started. Uh, because if you uh, go to origin of this particular scholarly topic of uh, stress and depression and anxiety. It started, uh, I mean, it started, the origin can be traced back to behaviorism, okay? But then over a period of time, uh, it got into biology. So, uh, you know, people from neuroscience domain, they started looking into the neurochemistry of stress and depression. From neuroscience, it went to the pharma domain because that's where all the drugs 
are developed in order to treat uh, stress and you know, depression and all this disorder. Uh, after it, uh, stress is also studied under genetics. Okay, it is also studied under epigenetics. Uh, and the recent addition is uh, there is a very good scholar actually Robert Sapolsky who is doing a wonderful job in that respect, uh, which is including primatology under the domain of stress. So this is where we stand today. Okay, starting from biology, uh, from you know medical science, from genetics, uh, you know epigenetics, then primatology and definitely the oldest, which is the behaviorism. So this is where the existing literature stands. This is our current position. This is, you can say, our current understanding of stress. Now, if you just again go back to this slide and look at it, what do you think, you know, or what portion do you think they represent? Because even within behaviorism, there are many factors that contribute to stress. Uh, one such factor is your uh, professional, let's say your professional life, okay? It means uh, sector variation, okay? The kind of sector in which you are working. But that is one such factor. There are many other factors that contribute to the stress. So, if you look at the existing lit literature that is like a Mount Everest that you have in front of you, and if you see the kind of work that have been replicated, um, I don't have any word, okay? I mean, how to uh, put this into the context? Because it, the, the objective, you know, when you are a researcher, when you call yourself a researcher, there is an obligation that come with that title. It's just not a fancy degree that, you know, before your name, you just get to uh, affix the doctor DR, you know, and you feel proud about it. There is an obligation that you bring something new in the existing, uh, you know, domain. You bring some novelty to our understanding, you add some value. So now if you look at these theses, how do you think the existing literature uh, justify this uh, thesis? Now I'll just leave it that to a question. I don't want to, want to say anything on that one. Uh, this is just another uh, uh, same illustration. This is a faculty publication. Uh, as I said, you know, uh, last to last year, I did hundreds of hundreds of paper reviewing, you know, a publication of uh, uh, faculties. This is just one uh, sample, you can say. Uh, this paper is basically trying to map your happiness. And you can see uh, what the faculty has done. Uh, basically, he picked out 20 students. Probably they were from the same college or institution picked out a questionnaire, sent it to them, had the parameter and got the data, you know, put it into probably some uh, statistical format and got the data, interpreted it and whatever the finding. So, and here is the basically EQ, uh, emotional intelligence, attachment, the childhood experience. And these are the things that are, you know, into this. Now the same thing, if you do, just go into the literature and try to find out first the position. What is the existing literature on happiness? First of all, there are many concepts of happiness. Okay, then, uh, it, you know it has a uh, there is a concept called meaningfulness. There is a concept called joy or bliss, and other things are also there. But anyway, if you just go into the existing literature and see uh, the current existing position of happiness. Uh, definitely, we have psychology, but we also have uh, research work from uh, sociology. We have research work from theology, and we also have research work from biology. So, one of the things that I kind of found is that uh, whenever you public uh, you publish a paper. Unless and until your paper matches 
with the existing literature, uh, it will be very difficult actually to get that citation that earlier I mentioned, you know, and this is one of the reasons why very few uh, scholars actually, uh, you can say most of the scholars don't even reach the threshold, which is the 20 marks. Forget about the 40 and 60, okay? But most of them don't even get to that 20 marks, which is just the threshold that, okay, at least 20, 25, which was age index is somewhere between 20 to 30, at least that is decent. But that's very few actually. I even have data, I'll probably show you at the end, okay? Uh, you can see. So this is the basic principle of JGate. When you search information in JGate, what happens is this, that you get a co very comprehensive, illustrative view of a particular concept, you can say. And the reason why I'm saying concept, because that's the first thing uh, that you need to understand on whatever the topic in which you are working. So on the left-hand side, you can see you have, uh, as I said, there is a specific segment for agriculture and biological science. You have arts and humanities, basic science. There is a segment for biomedical science, engineering, and social and management science. Now, whenever you search a topic in this platform, uh, by the way, it shows uh, ISI, but please uh, uh, just disregard that, okay? When you log in into, it will show Vishwarthi University. Uh, it's just the PPT that I had prepared uh, in the past. Uh, now, um, the searching part, uh, as I said, uh, stick to the keyword, any keyword, the semantic, uh, go for top down, uh, with, whichever you are comfortable with, and search accordingly, okay? Uh, now, whatever the keyword that you put in, if you want, you can specify certain things, okay? like whether you want to search only within basic, basic science, or you also want to search under engineering and technology, okay? Because it depends. So for example, if you are, in, if you are maybe let's say you are studying computer science, okay? Now one uh, central uh, pillar of computer science is mathematics. Now that mathematics comes under definitely basic science, but uh, engineering and technology also has got a separate domain. So it all depends on uh, uh, depends on you actually. Uh, what is it that you are trying to do? Are you doing a literature search, or you are just maybe trying to uh, download some relevant full text and get on with it? Okay. So you can do that selection, and you can search information accordingly. Now, if you are doing a literature search, JGate is certainly a very good platform. Why? Because uh, you have, let's say, you know, you have hold on each and every element of the data. Since it's an indexing platform, you can do a lot of things with the data. You know, you can search in many different ways. There are hundred ways, I would say, you can search, explore, and look for information. Now, this is just a uh, same illustration uh, in relation to stress. Now, what happens if you are doing a literature? Now, uh, if you remember that earlier example, most of the research work is definitely done under uh, psychiatry, okay, psychology, behaviorism. But you can also see you have research work done under neuroscience. You have research work done under biochemistry. You have research work done under molecular biology. You even had research work done under botany. Why botany? Because, you know, stress, trees, plants, they also go through stress depending on, you know, shift in climate or maybe change in the environment, a pollution, a lot of things lead to stress in plants. Uh, you know, uh, for, uh, I think in the flora, flora sector. So anyway, uh, not all of them might be relevant to you, but you can go ahead and select according to your need. You don't have to select. This is just a top 10 domain. If you, here you can see there is a subject classification, okay? And it shows 
who are the top most author of you know who has worked on this particular topic uh, this data will be helpful if you are trying to see what kind of work that they are doing or they have done because uh, basically these are the experts you can say in this particular topic so accordingly there are many things you can do uh, but anyway let's move on to the next one but here you see there is a subject now here is a top 10 branches under which this topic is covered now if you click on the subject this plus sign that is here it gives you a broad list so starting from psychiatry neuroscience mechanical engineering biochemistry pharma and you can see uh, medical education biology civil engineering or applied physics and all that so whatever you need you just select them and you filter accordingly Okay, because uh, the reason why you have civil engineering, because I use the term stress and there are certain elements uh, that even goes to this stress factor is also, you know, it's, it relates to uh, metal and other things as well. So that's why you have got civil engineering. But anyway, you can filter the data. Okay, I just, this is something I have done just for the illustration purpose. So uh, based on your need, you can, uh, customize the data and you know then you can go for uh, exploring uh, exploring uh, whatever uh, is you are left with okay because that's the first part that will tell you that will give you the complete literature and if you because see the one thing is that you need to understand that if you are trying to develop a new concept something new novel you first need to know what the existing literature has to offer. If you do not know what the existing literature has to offer, if you go ahead, do some random thing without knowing your you know, due diligence, eventually you end up with a derivative work. And uh, with a derivative work or a you know, replica, you can't expect a lot of citation. Because why would, you can ask a sensible question, right? If you have written a paper, something, I mean, if I already know something, why would I go ahead and read your work and cite you for something? Unless and, not, uh, unless and until your work has some impact, okay? Why would I go ahead and read, you know, uh, some work uh, that has nothing new? So that's the first most important question that, you need to ask, and then you first, probably first you need to see what the existing literature say, what the existing literature talks about, where does the existing literature stand, and then you can come up with whatever hypothesis that you think, uh, or whatever the notion that you want to work on. Okay. This is just another illustration. Uh, this is in relation with game theory. Again, you have the same view. You can see most of the work is done now under information science, uh, but anybody who knows game theory uh, would know that this was conceptualized by a person called, I think, John uh, von Neumann, uh, who also kind of seen as a father of computer science, but he was a mathematician actually. He developed this concept called game theory and now it is used in machine learning, it is all used in economics in order to make you know, financial decision or uh, economic theory. Uh, and you also have this AI. AI, usually it is under machine learning that this theory is used. So you can see, you know, it or the origin is are different than where now it is being used. And we also use game theory in psychology as well. Okay, we also studied when I, I did a uh, master in psychology. There also we, start, we uh, started this one. But then when I, I mean, kind of tried to understand who came up with it, then I found that, okay, well, it was a mathematician who came up with it. So you can see, I mean, the connection, the nexus, you know, and how they stretch. And that is exactly, you have to figure out. This is not something anybody can teach you, okay? It's like this, you know, let's say I'm your, I'm your faculty and you come and ask, 
Uh, no, uh, faculty may not be a very good example. Let's say that uh, I'm your financial advisor, okay? You have got some money and you want to, maybe you want to become a karurpati, okay, a billionaire. And you come to a financial advisor and you say, uh, well, you know, I have this much money. Can you help me to become a billionaire? Don't you think that there is a logical error in that? I understand there is a, a counter view as well, but if I knew already how to become a billionaire, probably I would have already become one, right? I wouldn't be just lying there as a financial advisor. Uh, that is one way to look at it. So that part that which nexus to identify, that is where you come in. That is what your journey is all about, that journey that you have embarked on. That is what you have to figure out. What is the nexus? Whether Is there any nexus or not? And that is what you have to propose at some point of time. It's not something that anybody can help you. Uh, people can guide you with a lot of things, but then that, you know, uh, that, what would you say? Uh, that, you know, the connect, that dot, okay, uh, that mark is something that only you can find out or probably something you will find out. It's not something that anybody can tell you. Uh, it's, you know, like you said, David Hume has a very good uh, uh, hypothesis. It says that ease and odd problem. Like, can you derive uh, odd from ease? And he says it is not possible. It's, uh, now, anyway, that ease or problem will make your life a bit more complicated. But forget about that. But anyway, uh, if I stick to just the literature, so this literature will so show you what is there, what can be there or what will be the case. That is something that you have to figure out. But uh, eventually, uh, that uh, what will be the case, before you get there, you need to find out what is there? And that is something that very few uh, scholars, you know, uh, I have seen people do. But anyway, uh, this is a different view, actually. If you cross that uh, uh, diagram, uh, then you get a look like this. You have many other filters. You can see author-wise filter. You have journal-wise filter. You have ranking wise filter, year wise filter. So if you are doing a timeline review, like maybe uh, recent 10 years, and then maybe at a different time, you are again taking 10 years from the past. So that timeline study, you can easily do from here. Country of publication, if it is relevant, you can try that. You also have a publisher. Uh, remember that 13,000 publishers. So you will find the list under the publisher. And in case if you are doing something with the publisher, you can try that. Okay, here is a view of how it looks. Okay, and if you are, maybe you just want to do maybe top 10 publisher, just see what kind of work uh, they have published on a certain topic. So you can do that. You just make the selection and filter the data accordingly. Okay, it will make your life a lot easier. Uh, you don't have to open multiple, what would you say? If you try to do them individually, it is not difficult and uh, it's very complicated. So, but here it's very easy actually because it's just the metadata you need to do, uh, you need to play with. Okay, just do the necessary selection and go ahead. Uh, I'll just keep this one, okay? It's not very uh, relevant. Uh, it's just one additional feature that now uh, we have incorporated. Uh, JGate is now, can be integrated with Koha. Uh, it's called My Library. So just for that, uh, maybe some other time we'll talk about it, you know, when we are having a formal training session. Uh, this is how the full text will look like. If you, if it is a green sign, you can go ahead and download the PDF. Now, let me just tell you one thing. Uh, the full text access is a bit, uh, there is something that you should know. The access, if you are doing from the campus, then there won't be any issue, okay? But if you are using this platform off campus, because JGate also has that, if you're using it, then the full text may not work because 
if you are using jgate credentials for the metadata then it you can allow i mean you can access all the data okay but the full text will, will not be able to download for that make sure that you are using it in the campus okay you can search information you can save it okay and next time when you come to the come back to uh, campus and then, then you go ahead and download but uh, and don't try to download full text when you are outside the campus unless you, you are using remote access okay if you are using remote access then it's fine you can go ahead and you know do whatever you want now here it shows two but uh green red but there is one more item that you will see that is called request article okay uh, remember if uh, if you remember i said in the beginning that this is a consortia platform and all the uh, you know IITs, IIMs, state universities, central universities, they use this platform, and many of them they share their unique collection in this platform, and it will show request articles. So if you see request article, it is similar to ResearchGate. You just send the request to this other library. Okay, maybe you'll be sending one to Jadavpur University or maybe Calcutta. So it will depend. Okay, it's not a big deal. Uh, you just select uh, the request and they will send you the soft copy in your email. Okay. Now uh, it's called document delivery request. Uh, that is all, it's also known as interlibrary loan facility. Okay. Uh, this is for your registration in case if you want to use it as personal library. Okay. You want to save some journals, then it's a very simple process that you have to do a registration. How will you do it? First, you need to click on this My JGate. Okay. Uh, when you are in the campus, you first click on My JGate, then click on the Create New Account. Once you click on My JGate, this Create New Account option will appear. Then just do the registration and you are done. Okay. Whatever the ID that you select there. Uh, you can use that ID and password next time when you are uh, using it off campus. And also in the campus as well, inside the campus, if you are trying to save some articles or you, you are interested in getting alerts and everything, then you need to do this uh, registration. Okay, It's a one-time thing. Uh, please do. It will, uh, I would say, uh, give you a lot of uh, ease provide you with a lot of ease uh, getting information. Uh, these are some small, small features which are there. You can see you have peer review, professional Indian journals, only Indian journals, open access, hybrid open access. <laughs> you have, if you want to save some journals, you can do that if you want to get alert. So you have these features uh, that you can uh, use accordingly. Uh, this is, again, some other small set of features. If you want to save article, you can do that. There is a citation, OK? There are various formats, APA, Chicago, Vancouver. So you can use them. This is the citation one. If you want to email, you can do that. You can take a printout and definitely you can download the full text. Okay. This is for collaboration. I'm not going to illustrate on this one. Uh, maybe some other day if we are having some other training, because this is actually a different model that you have. And uh, even if I say you may not even get this one. Okay. Uh, one last thing before I finish the PPT part. Uh, in JKIT, we have integrated a new feature called citation statement. Uh, this citation statement is different than the Scopus citation or WS uh, citation, okay? Uh, this citation statement has a positive citation ranking, contrasting citation, and this site, uh, you also have this one, uh, the total number of publication citation, uh, except the self-citation number, 
Okay, minus uh, the. Can uh, I sorry. just interrupt a bit? Uh, sure, you sure. Just mentioned about contrasting citations. Yes. So, uh, yeah, what are they? Okay, the contrasting citation is this. Let's say that I uh, doing an experiment on a particular drug on a set of lists of patients, okay? Now, during the trial, let's say that uh, when I uh, write down the work, during the trial, let's say that I found out that this particular drug, if I use it on pregnant uh, women, they experience uh, maybe headache or vomiting. Okay, now definitely that part will be uh, included in my research paper. Now maybe some other uh, you know scholar or maybe scientist who is also doing the similar trial, and while he was conduct or he will be conducting the study or maybe he is conducting the study, his patients don't experience that that symptom or those symptoms which my patient or while I was doing the study had experienced. So what right. they would do I is, get that. So they get some contrasting data. Yes. Uh, to mine. Okay, okay, I get that. So, it's an interesting, I mean, uh, different, I would say, because up until now, the citation was very straightforward. Uh, uh, but this uh, institution, uh, the site, it's a US-based uh, institution. They are using this AI and ML uh, to get the data. So just check it out, okay? It, it might be interesting uh, uh, for you. And this is how it looks, okay? It shows uh, where the contrast or the similarity lies and it gives you uh, other than that. There are many other things you can see the diagram, the citation pattern and everything. Uh, but the basic difference between the uh, Scopus and this site is this. Uh, it, is, it is called a contextual citation. That's the term. Uh, basically, it's a qualitative matrix, okay? Because, there, because in Scopus, it is a very straightforward analytical part. You have the citation, you get the number. You understand how many times this paper has been cited. Uh, but here, they are doing something additional, not only uh, that number, but they are trying to see uh, where it was cited and what kind of the nature of the citation. So that's the basic, dif uh, the core difference, I would say, okay? Yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, everything in terms of the platform. Um, how much time I'm left? Yeah, I think I have taken 45. I'm not going to show you this data. Uh, uh, just leave with this thing for some other time, okay? But again, uh, if I just can uh, summarize the entire thing, I would just say a couple of things. This is a database, it's a literature. Uh, that's why it's called, uh, and when you are doing literature review, it will help you the most, okay? Um, and if you just remember those do's and don'ts, it's fine, okay? Just use the specific keywords in case if you just have started your thesis work, uh, you might need some time uh, before you get accustomed with the semantics. Uh, but if you can do so, you will also grow as an individual, I mean, as a scholar, okay? Because different semantics, uh, understanding the differences uh, is also, you know, important at some point of time. Uh, why those differences lie? Is it only the semantics or there is really something in there? So anyway, you will learn those things when you are, you know, uh, exploring different semantics and all that. So, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind, and I think you will be fine. Uh, you will be having uh, much trouble in the platform. So, I think uh, now it's time I shut up <laughs> and uh, get the forum back to the audience. Uh, in case if they have any question, any doubt, I think it will be better in that way. I have a question, sir. Yes. yes. Hello. 
Yeah. Right. So generally, what happened? Generally, when somebody cites my uh, publication in research paper in their research paper, then that should be included in our uh, citation. Okay. okay. But uh, generally, I have seen that many times we include uh, and uh, our our research work means the paper is included in the uh, thesis itself. But mm -hmm. that always not, I mean, always may never not, um, uh, I think, uh, coming. The data is not reflected. Yes. Yeah. Citation yeah. Um, uh, index. Okay. Uh, yes, it is there. There is a twofold reason uh, why the number one is most of the data, if you go for Sodhganga or Kishikos, that's where you have agricultural thesis mm -hmm. work. Uh, uh, the last time I checked, there was a technical issue. Somehow it's not following the proper citation uh, method. Uh, that is number one. And many a times the way uh, in Sodh Ganga, the thesis are indexed, uh, that citation is not, I mean, uh, for some reason, uh, if you talk about Google Scholar or maybe some popular uh, uh, publisher, they don't get to they don't get the link and more uh, one other thing is if you go by popular publisher like science direct or maybe nature or lancet and all that uh, they don't uh, have access to our thesis one because i actually never found that thing that uh, in a uh, when going through some of the paper works but i personally i never actually found one i do not know uh, why that is the case Maybe it is something that so uh, Ganga, they have to figure out why uh, when a work is being cited or whatever the works that are cited in a particular thesis, why that uh, the data is not uh, reflected, you know, uh, on the uh, on the author's credential. Uh, but yeah. having said that, I'll just show you one thing very quickly. So in future, is it not possible to uh, give in? Maybe, maybe with the advancement of technology, uh, we will have it. See, this is CSIR uh, lab, okay? It's in there in Kolkata. And this is from Google Scholar. See the highest cited uh, scholar, uh, scientist, let's say, okay? The highest citation you have got 17,800, right? And after that, 9,000, 7,000, 5,000, and 5,000 plus. This is CSIR. This is IIT Kharagpur. The highest citation, you have 23,000, then 22, then 17, then 60. And the number keeps decreasing. Okay, I just only have, took the front page. This okay. is Rice University. This is world's, uh, uh, I think, top 100. It, fall, uh, it falls under top 100 universities. I'm not... I didn't take uh, Oxford on all that one. Uh, that will be probably that will be not very good idea. But anyway, this is a standard university. It, it's, its ranking is 100 uh, globally. See, it's starting. 1,99,800. Then 1,79,000, 1,32, 1,26. Here, the highest, it starts 23. Uh, CSIR even that's less, 17,000. Uh, IIT Karakpur has got 23. Here the highest number is nanotechnology, chemistry, physics. This is hydrology, you have basic science, 1,99,000. Now see the basic science here. You have, there is a person called Eduardo Salas, cited by 1,26,000. And he is from social science background. Now, if you go to his work, See the H index 180, total citation I already showed you. And this is one of his paper. The difference between this IIM faculty, his work, and this work, this is an experimental work. Something similar to like, you know, uh, you can say lab study. Okay, had a bunch of students, done, done the simulation, did the study, find out the data, you know, got the data or rather created the data and then proceeded for the next. But if you look at this paper, the difference is this is 
a very theoretical, just review based paper. And the same even for this uh, individual, okay, this is, you can see the article is summarizing review on such and such topic. Now, this defines why this difference, why you have got 1,26,000 citation and why you have got, I mean, citation with maybe uh, this number, 20, uh, sorry, 2,000. This is IIM's uh, total citation. The highest is 2,400 and then from 2,000, 1,000, 1,700. And uh, if you keep scrolling down, it will be even less and less. This is what I, I but see, even if you have, let's say, few citations missing for whatever the reason. Now, in your case, it is purely technical because uh, the publisher don't have access to the data somehow. It is not properly aligned in the web. But in broader sense, in order to hit this number, at least to get beyond, let's say, in social science, uh, beyond 40, 50, in basic science, beyond 60, and maybe average citation, it's a thousand, two thousand, uh, and even more than, if possible, more than that. Getting to that number, the work has to have that credibility. And in social science, mostly what I found is that, and even if you remember the first one, right, the one uh, there, that happiness part, they're very simple, uni unilateral, I mean, research, I mean, replicative work. It doesn't bring any value. I mean, yeah, you can definitely a lot of work was put into this. Time was taken, uh, many things, whatever the you know. But that way, you you won't be able to get that marking. That uh, if you want to hit, let's say, ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand, you know, citation, you have your research must have that quality in relation to the existing literature, which is the most important part. It is not that what you are doing, it's more you have to see you are doing in relation to what the existing literature provided. And if you can justify your position in relation to the existing literature, I think eventually you catch up. At least the citation, the H index eventually will grow on you know, in that direction. Because afterwards also you will have your own, you know, instinct, your own uh, probably analysis, why this topic will need to be, uh, you know, uh, study must be conducted. There are other objective questions, but I'm not getting into that secondary level questionnaire. Uh, the primary questionnaire that I have, okay, what is the existing literature say and where does your work stand there? And I mean, does it tell anything new? It, does it have anything new? So if that part is missing, uh, then it will be very difficult, sir, in order to, I mean, uh, hit that milestone, whatever the milestone that you are, or we are rather trying to achieve in citation. Because at the end, the citation determines the impact of your work. Unless it's a literature, then it's a different story for it. Uh, but then again, from if you're in literature, then the uh, demand from you is very different. You know, usually it's like, you know, how many stories or how many books you have written and other things. Uh, but anyway, other than the literature part, uh, social, in social science, pretty much uh, across all the subjects, the citation is, uh, is definitely a marking point for, you know, for researcher. And especially for thesis work, I think students, they really need to first get into the literature rather than just, uh, you know, downloading some papers and then going into their references. And you know, that's where probably pretty much their quest ends. Uh, this is primarily, I would say the database will really help to the scholars. And then definitely faculties, they can use to some degree uh, uh, for their uh, work. But I, the uh, platform does have some limitation in terms of uh, the full text part. Uh, but either way, for scholars, I don't think there, is, there, will, there will be any uh, such limitation.
I think we have a question. Okay, sir. Thank you for your collaborative answer. Uh, Hello. Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Uh, sir, uh, Jagat provide uh, design journals also or uh, not? Uh, you mean in architecture? Yeah. Yes, we do have some. That number may not be a lot, but uh, there are some few. Okay, so actually we have a design uh, institute. That is why I am asking. Okay. Uh, is it affiliated with Vishwarthi or is it separate? No, 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 sir. It's in Pune, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, you do one thing. Uh, you talk to uh, uh, Koshik, sir, okay? He has my contact details and everything. In case if you decide, uh, maybe you can take the number from him and then just let me know. Okay, I'll give you the details and other things that you will need that might okay. help you to decide. Okay. Okay, fine, sir. Thank you, you sir. Have doc you have Dr. Koshik uh, number, right? Uh, sir, sir, I don't have a sir. I have a Mr. Uh, Rajendra Hiwale, Hiwale uh, contact details. Okay, Koshik, sir, will... Uh, Ma'am, in, in which institute you belong? In which sir, institution? Sir, I belongs to <laughs> MIT Kidma of Engineering. Oh, yesterday you have also joined. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Actually, yes, sir. all the contact number is available in our library website also. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, if any question, I am uh, requesting uh, from the participants. Uh, if any question, please uh, furnish your uh, question directly uh, to uh, Mahendra Nath Sarkar or you may furnish your query uh, to the chat box also. Okay, so hopefully question session is already over. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Just to subscribe. Thank you, Mandana Sarkar. May I request our information scientist, Ram Prasad Majumdar. So give the vote of thanks as a routine job. Thank you. Thank you, Ram, Ram sir, please. Thank you, Koshi. Uh, uh, Mr. Mandar Nathji. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you go through the chat box. There is a one question is there uh, about the subscription of JMI. Okay. What I'm going to do is uh, I'll well, just a second. You can you, you can you can share your email ID and uh, phone number to the chat box so that yes, I have given it. I have given my phone number seven six zero four zero one two five double one. Yeah. Uh, just uh, give me a call uh, when you have uh, when you have time. I think there is one question regarding agriculture first. Shall yes, I yes. answer yeah. it, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen one more time. Okay, just give me one. There second. is a there is a question about the login. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, screen share is given. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Now this is uh, I do have one credential. Now this is the Vishwavarati uh, landing page. Okay. If you log in from the campus, now I have one default login and password with me. I got it uh, this morning only just for the session, but you will not have it. Okay. This is only for the library. Uh, um, uh, what do you say? individuals or people from the library. Now, what you can do is, if you want to create an ID, okay, maybe you want to access it off campus. So for the first time, okay, first time, what you need to do is go to the library. When you go to the library, you type jgateplus.com. Okay, this is the URL. And when you type jgateplus.com, you won't be needing an ID and password. It will directly come here because 
the IP of library are integrated. So you won't be needing that. So for the first time, when you need to create that ID, go to the library, take any computer from the library, okay? Then click on jgitplus.com and you will land on this page. Now, when you are on this page, click on my jgit, okay? You can write it down, please. Do not forget, it's very simple. Just two things you need to do. First, click on my jgit. Now, when you click on my jgit, you will get this create new account option. Okay? And when you click on this create new account, you will get a registration form. You put your first name, your last name, any email address. If you have Vishwabharati email, you use that. Or you can just use your own Gmail. You select any password, your department. Uh, just select your role. If you are a researcher, select researcher. Uh, library ID is not mandatory, then click on register and you are done. Okay. Once you have done the registration, this email ID, next time when you log in, you can use the same ID and password in order to log in into the platform. So you will be putting your email under username and the password, whatever the password that you selected when in the library, you can use it in order to log in off campus okay and inside the campus you won't be needing anything in that library if you are accessing from the library you don't need an id password if you just type jgetplus.com it will come here yes hello, hello, uh, hello mr uh, uh, mahindra ji yes, yes, uh, all our participants are requested to if you are using the jget within the campus it is mm -hmm. enabled with your, within our ip based so there is yes. no need to log in Right. So you can access all the jagged info, uh, articles and uh, titles and everything within a campus. If you are outside the campus, campus, then you have to go to the LS Discovery and log in it. Then it will be get the remote access option. Then you will get the jagged action option also. So there is a uh, no need to log in in jagged. But within a yes. campus, it is available uh, through IP desk and outside the campus. You have to log in the LS Discovery. Then JGET is, JG is available. And uh, there was another question in re, uh, regards to the agriculture. Here yeah. you can see, if you go to browse A to Z, here you will find the total number of journals. See, that is 58,000. Uh, so this number keeps growing every day. Anyway, now if you just scroll a bit down, you go to the subject section. Here you will find this agricultural science. And if you click on this plus sign, so you can find all the subjects that <laughs> fall under agricultural science. I am regularly using LS Discovery. It is very helpful. Yes. Okay. If you want to find out how many, let's say you are a student of maybe dairy technology, you, okay, maybe forestry. So you select forestry, you click on apply yeah. filter, and it will give you all the forestry yeah. journals. Okay, so in that way you can always filter it down. Let's say that you are a maybe student of. So under physics, you can see you have acoustic, you have applied physics, you have astronomy, you have energy, you have magnetism, you have. So you have all these subjects, and you just do the selection. And you do the okay. So that's, I think, answers. I think that question, that answers the agriculture question. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think that was the only question regarding the subject coverage. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, you also, you, you also uh, send your the email ID so that if anybody has a question, and then uh, send the question to your email. Yes, yes, anytime, anytime. I'm always there. Anybody has, uh, I have WhatsApp in that number, that number I shared, 760401. Yeah. So, okay. Question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mahindraji. So, it is a good presentation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Koshik.
first of all i convey my heartily thanks to our librarian uh, dr nimaichal sah to initiate this type of uh, session it is very much helpful to all the participants not only the participants but also helpful to the outside of the shwati faculty and any other librarian they are very much it will be enriched so thankful to our vishwa central library and also vishwati library network to help their participation and their cooperation and thankful to the madraji again so your good and nice yes, presentation yes. so if anybody has any question then you can send your uh, question to the madraji through email or phone number so our uh, the health is not good our librarian so <laughs> on the chair <laughs> if it, uh, it can say something then it will be to the uh, much better and it will be fulfillment of the session so you might i can say something thank you thank you sir thank you uh, actually because of i cough in the throat i would have decided to <laughs> We all have, sir. We all have done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, as scope has been given, let me say a few words about the uh, Jagat platform and the background of initiating this kind of six days deliberation during this high hot, particularly in Bengal and something like that. See, actually, our campus is under summer, so our scholars, students, and most of the faculty members are not in Delhi meet physically with us, and that's why we have decided to have an interaction with them. This video conferencing tool is a kind of connectivity which we have learned during the day of pandemic. so that's why we have initiated this kind of sessions and today's session <clears throat> i must say the jagat not only as a research tool uh, rightly mr sarkar has noted as a jagat as a literature rightly and there are some new words ideas conception apart from the inertia of jagat he has been pointed out which is highly emergent to any academia be faculty member be scholars or anyone for conducting any research or conducting any you know uh, publication work like that therefore <clears throat> the new ideas were contrasting citation then contextual citation because we are habituating with in text citation citation means based on any international acclaimed citation style and cross reference like that but today's basic output from the researcher's point of view what i must note it the contrasting citation and contextual citation is highly emergent in the current uh, research arena particularly to the field of science and also non science maybe where works has been done on the base or based on some kind of field study or observation like that so i must congratulate and extend our regards to friendly mr moinona jain uh, sarkar to whom we actually do not consider as neither the representative from informatics nor any representative of a vendor rather i must address him as a well wisher of bisorodi library as a literary awareness provider to the bisorodi scholars faculty members usually but today as you found that we are having participants from all over india so they have some sort of scope to participate to experience 
the views on the six topic which we have encapsulated through our notice as well as to share their thoughts and ideas with the presenter demonstrator research person whatever i can say so before going to winding up i must request mr sarkar to continue same or more sorts of cooperation with vishwabharati to educate us to ensure the quality research to educate us to ensure our safe career to ensure our institutional prestige academic prestige like that and jagat without jagat i must say research or academic works is next to difficult to conduct because it's a handy tool and the logic behind made up for search engine that is discovery is marvelous so i request other institute members those who are over here if possible please subscribe and to add value to your institute to upgrade the research and developmental activities and from our side of course our faculty members our scholars our stakeholders are using these things and we will again organize one special session on jagat from the speech of same person none other than mohanrad sarkar ji regarding the contribution or coordination i mean second page of jagat as he said that if it is a primary presentation then another presentation is there during his presentation he has said that he will have a talk on another occasion on the same topic then one attendee madam vandana kandelwal i think mit pune she is from mit pune she has a question that are you provide participation certificate as far as our notification we have not mentioned regarding any certification but if anybody require any certificate for his institutional production if they mail us then going through our system means zoom database if we found that 100% times you have attend then only we will think and we may provide one acknowledgement or certificate which will help you to produce before your institute if required so this is my answer of a questions in the chat box thank and you. thank you yeah and before winding up if i don't extend our gratefulness thanks and congratulation to the participants all from vishwabharati maybe students maybe scholars maybe staff and my respected faculty members i found many of the faculty members are there on the board and of course the members those who are other than vishwabharati have joined to encourage us to conduct this similar kind of session in future with this few notes let me just declare that today's session is over and let me invite you all to join on the same day uh, on the same time on tomorrow and rest of the four days to educate yourselves to award yourselves and to encourage ourselves so that we will take up same initiatives in future thank you one and all from the sorathi library network thank you very much thank you mohinder ji and we will meet sir. you thank you yes again we will meet you and next time we will have your physical presence in the campus this time summer and it's very close day to have have your appointment that's why in future uh, we intend to have in this conference room like earlier most likely 2019 pre corona you are here so we need to have your physical uh, uh, presence at the campus which will have a significant value to us so thank you thank you everyone let us now uh, close the meeting <clears throat>